There are those who are looking at this bill and they may have some sort of influence in two ways. One, there could be an, M an MP on his own assessment from Azimio who sees the benefit in this bill, in these provisions. They may also be persuaded by other individuals to see the benefits in this bill. But again, if you want to mobilize, Las Raila will want to mobilize the people to fight, that, that fire may not be as hot if some people look at the benefits. And some people look at the benefits. So let's look at each of these. NHIF. I'm going to be a victim. I'll pay more than I'll be comfortable with. But face the truth. Is it really fair? Is it even feasible? Is it not even immoral? Bordering on criminality. That a vegetable seller, a border, border rider, an office messenger, a cleaner somewhere, would pay 500 shillings when a man earning a million pays only 1,700. A man earning 10,000, paying 500. A man earning 1,000, if that is 10, uh, 50,000, that's almost how many times? Five times. So it should be five times five, 2,500. A person earning 100,000 shillings, to be fair, if a man who earns 10,000 would be paying 500, how much should you pay? Fairness. So it's understandable. There are challenges of how the money is used. There are even bigger challenges. I don't believe in NHIF. Can we use that money better? But the truth is, while we still have NHIF, people paying according to what they get makes a lot of sense. And it will inform people as they think. NSSF, which is part of the burden that makes the 3% a bigger problem. Again, it is true, almost very true, that those who retire without a pension with only NSSF, the amount of monies they get, 30,000, 40,000, 80,000, when you've worked for 30 years, the amount of money you go home with certainly is too little. It can't help you. And therefore, the need to increase is inevitable. The contributions to NSSF should go up. It makes a lot of sense. We can borrow from Uganda. Then when you are retiring, even um, the lowest paid worker, you can go home with 500,000, 600,000, 400,000. At least you may buy two cows for your retirement. The housing levy. Over 80% of the people in Nairobi live in things we call slums. Those habitats are not for human beings. There is no there for any doubt in, in anybody's mind that we need houses in Nairobi. Obvious. Goes without saying. Where are the aged people of Nairobi going? They can't go back to the villages where they came from. Some of them don't even have where to go. In a country that, like the UK, if you don't have a house and you are beyond 60 years, the government gives you a house and gives you like 200 pounds per, per week. We will need our elderly retirees in this country, and they have been ranked as some of those ones suffering the most in the world. We will need our retirees to live respectable lives. We need houses for them, so we need houses. Nairobi is moving into five million people. You cannot have a city of five, four hundred million people with a mortgage of 26,000 people, with the limited housing provisions in the, in the city. And therefore, it's not in doubt. This country, and Nairobi in particular, requires houses. The elephant in the room, however, is simply this. Can the pay slip take more? That should be the conversation. The conversation of, of whether or not we need houses and we need a, a fund is not a conversation we can have. It's not necessary. We need houses and we need money. We can't get money from trees.
We can't keep borrowing. We need a fund to build houses. That is not for, for discussion. The discussion is, the people you are targeting, what shall we do because they are already overburdened? That is the conversation. So if you spend so much energy on that we don't need this thing, you lose the opportunity to discuss the ways of how can Kenyans contribute to a fund without dying doing so. That is where government must be pushed into a discussion. We need money, we need houses, we need money, and Kenyans must provide that money. That leaves you, leaves you a very simple thing. That government will need to do something. I propose that the finance bill passes, fine, with all the provisions. But we defy implementation of the provisions on housing. Until we get into a post-COVID economic recovery, when the economy does well, government will increase salaries. And with increased salaries, we can levy these people. But finally, the government can pull a rug from under Zimio's feet. That's why I say you must think. The government can give a general wage increase tomorrow. General wage increase. Government can even diffuse the cry and complaint from the employer by taking that component. Because the government is the biggest employer anyway in this country for formal employees. So if government is already paying 3% for its employees, taking the burden from the other employers may not even be a difficult thing. And that is the conversation we ought to be having. That we need increased in NSSF contribution, but it must be streamlined. NHIF increased for equity and for fairness, but it must be streamlined the management. We need housing. The fund must be streamlined. We need to know who is going to run the, the fund. How do you select members to the board? Are our workers adequately represented through KOTU? Is the money safe? Have we learned something from the theft and the plant of NSF in the years gone by? Are we learning anything from the plunder of NHIF? Can we insulate the new housing fund from this plunder? How shall we distribute the houses? How do beneficiaries get the houses? But the bottom line that this bill will pass. And if the opposition is banking on this bill not passing, then I will advise them to think again. But I will invite government, I invite government, to think very hard, very hard, before they force contributions in an ailing economy with the people whose pay slips can barely accommodate another deduction of even 50 shillings. Those who represent the people, the members of parliament, are left with no option other than to fight to save Ruto's government, to fight to give the government the resources government requires to move the economy forward, the resources the government requires to repair Uhuru's damage. That is the option MPs have from the Kenya Kwanzaa side. So if you are waiting to look for MPs from that side, voting with the people who elected them, then you will have another thing coming, as Americans will tell you. It's not going to work. And for that reason, because of the framing, because of the narrative that this is a Kenya Kwanzaa war versus vis-a-vis, -vis, and as a mere war, the Kenya Kwanzaa MPs will vote with the government, almost to a man or woman, if you wish.